Why does the wind keep blowing? Why does the wind keep blowing? The wind stings my eyes. I stood at the gate all day. And as people from the other towns passed by, I asked them if their skies at home were dark. No, they said. The weather has been fine. The sky's been full of stars. Why do you ask? How could I tell them why I asked? Could I say, there's nothing but this lonely wind? Could I say, we have no stars? <laughs> Theater 5 presents The Noon Star. It was St. Augustine who said, Thou hast forgiven me those sins which I have done, and those sins which only by thy grace I have not done. But I say to each of you in this church, the sins you have not done are the secret sins, the sins of inclination, the sins of it might have been. Garth. Yes? That's not what St. Augustine meant. What? He meant the sin was forgiven, not that it had to be paid for. Cast out the secret sin, I say. Cast out that which inclineth. And may God have mercy on you, each and all. <clears throat> Must I speak to him, Garth? You're my wife, Elspeth. You've got to learn to live here. Oh, it's a fine sermon, Reverend. Thank you, Mr. We need hard thoughts to shape our minds on. It was a forceful sermon, Reverend. Thank you. Oh, I like that word, Mrs. Hanson. Your wife's got a head on her, Garth, even if she's not from uh, hereabouts. Father? Yes, what is it, boy? Uh, may I meet Jonathan out front? Silas, this is Sunday. This is not a day for games and laughing. Remember that. Center your mind. Yes, sir. Will I see you at the council meeting, Samuel? You will. There are stringent matters, Garth. Oh, he's one of the few, that man. No nonsense with Samuel Cole. No. Not even for the children. Hmm? Uh, what my wife means, Mrs. Brokeen, is that she admired the sobriety of our town. The order of it. <laughs> what's all that noise? What's going on there? Look at all those children in the square. What, uh -huh. What's going on out there? Who's making all that noise? They're gathered around that red-haired boy. Do you know him, Gord? No, maybe the others do. What does this mean? What's going on out there? Silas, come here. Yes, sir. What is the meaning of that laughter? Who, who is that boy? Oh, I don't know, Father. He says he can see the stars. Right now, in the middle of the day, he can see the stars. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> oh, come up here, boy. Come here, at once. That boy's a stranger. What's he doing here? Uh, yes, sir. Now, what's this nonsense about? Nonsense, sir. About seeing stars? Uh, they're up there, sir. Don't be impudent, boy. Oh, oh, no, sir. I only meant that all I have to do is look. I don't know why, but... I can see them. See? There's Arcturus. Orion. Polaris over there. And that's Sirius, the dog star. I like the dog star. Why do you like it? Oh, I don't know. It follows me. Do you mean you really see them now? It's unnatural, Reverend. It's devil's work. It's wrong. Wrong. Boy, I don't know you. I don't know your family. You're disturbing the Sabbath here. Now you go home, wherever you live. I'd really like to, sir, but... Yes, I don't know where I live. I, I thought maybe it was here. Does anybody know me? Do I live here? But I never heard such, well, such loneliness. When he asked me if anyone knew him, I, I thought I'd cry. It must be some lapse of memory. But where will he go? What will become of him? I don't know. We discussed it at the council meeting, but... There doesn't seem to be any answer. Meantime, the boy is drifting, eating when someone feeds him. Let's take him in, Garth. Care for him. I'm not sure we ought to. But he needs us. Samuel has called a special meeting of the council outside the courthouse at noon tomorrow. He had a map of the stars drawn. We're going to test the boy. If he points to the part of the sky shown on the map, then... Then what? Well, at least we'll know that he does see the stars or that he doesn't. 
which will be better or worse? Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Anson. Oh, this is Prokeen. Have you seen my husband? I'm still inside. The whole council studying the Reverend's map before they put him to the test. Did you see that, Jonathan? He does magic, too. Look what? at him. I'll teach you how, Silas. Uh-oh. Anybody can make a handkerchief disappear. Uh, Look at him teaching those children all manner of black art. And they're still laughing at him like this was some carnival. The boy didn't ask for it, you know. It's unnatural the way he's made them forget their sins. Hey, here they come, Jonathan. Here comes the council. Oh, bring him over here, Simon. Hey, I'm, I'm coming. I've been waiting. Stand here with me, Garth. Follow the map while I question him. Yeah, they will be quiet among us, please. Oh, boy. Yes, sir? Now we'll see what possesses that boy. You have made the claim, boy, that you see the stars in daylight, that you know each one by name and its exact location in the sky. Yes, sir. That is unusual. I have known ever since I can remember, sir, but I don't recall having to learn. And about seeing them in the daylight, well, I thought everybody could until not long ago. It's so easy if you put your eye to it. (laughs) Silence, please. Silence among us. This is a moral inquiry. I ask you now, boy, to point out the location of the Sar Antares. Over there, sir, on the northern horizon, in the constellation of Scorpius, six stars down from the left eye of the scorpion. Correct. Correct. Silence, please, silence. I remind you, this is a grave matter. Now, boy, the star Pollux. Pollux is there. 83 degrees south of Antares in the constellation Gemini. That is correct. And the star Sirius? Oh, that's my dog star, sir. In Canis Major, down there near the southern horizon. You can almost hear him bark if you listen. <laughs> and uh, Vega? Well, there's Vega in the Lyra group. And there's Beta Centauri and Deneb and Akernar out there. See? Well, and, that's amazing. And, and over, over in the west there, that's Regulus. Prokeon out there, up there. Capella on the wagon wheel. There's a Cygnus group, see? Well, you never hear a thing like that. There's Orion. And Regal and Aldebaran. <laughs> and, and order, order, please. That, that will be enough. Oh, oh but, but, sir, I've only named the first magnitudes. There are billions of smaller ones out there, all asking to be named. And... What? <laughs> order. Order, please. And I say to each of you in this congregation that the levity displayed on that occasion was an offense against heaven. We have among us a young being of a most unsettling nature, a boy who sees what we cannot see, a boy with power to make us behave unseemly. Is that a matter for levity? Or rather, I say to you, it is a matter for apprehension. Who is this boy without a name, without a home? Why can God, he what see? What in the world is he Star. doing? Samuel has been laughed at. He doesn't like that. But he's inciting these what people against this child. Is this boy? And I send you back to your homes today to search out the answer, the meaning of this thing that has come to us. Look into your deeds. As you go home now, ask yourselves why he has come among us. And may God have mercy on you, each and all. It's disgraceful, God. Do you hear what they're saying? It's convenient to have something to blame sins on. Did you hear what he said, Jonathan? He must be some kind of devil or something. Listen to the words of your father, boy. The reverend's a man of truth. Yes, Mrs. Prokey. A man of vision. Come on, Jonathan, let's go. A man of poison. Quiet, Elspeth. They'll hear. But what is the council afraid of, God? Does the reverend hate the boy because he's happy? I think Samuel is jealous. Of that boy? Of his power. To see the stars? No, to make people realize that there are things to Jonathan, see. Jonathan, Abel, that strange boy, he's over there. Things he doesn't want them to see? Things he doesn't dare let them see. Differences, Elspeth. If our people understand a difference, then Samuel's sameness is gone. Samuel is gone. Is that why you wouldn't take the boy in? Were you afraid of differences? Simon, Simon, let's get him. Get the strange one. If we take him in, we're lost here. If we don't take him in, we're lost everywhere. Abel, Jonathan, all you boys, he's over there. Get him. Silas, Silas, what are you doing? What's that? Get him, Simon. Don't let him run away. 
The boys are after him. Hold off, no. We've got to stop them. Hurry! Oh, they're stoning him, God. Simon, don't hit that boy. Do you hear me? Oh, God, I'm After him, Simon! Go on, run away, you little cowards, but I know who you are, and I know who did this thing. Oh, you poor boy. Are you badly hurt? Oh, my, my eye. I can't see out of it. Come along. We'll take you home. And I say to you in this parish that those who seek to divide us, those who seek to destroy us by clasping the venom unto them, they alone shall be poisoned. Let it be known that we shall not only cast out the evil, but the keepers of evil. This well may be a test of our eternal vigilance against the forces of darkness that creep into our midst in strange shapes and guises. Let it be the duty of each of us to cast out evil and those who shelter sinfulness. Can you see who it is, Garth? Mrs. Prokeen. Don't let her in. You're worried. Aren't you? This is my home, Elspeth. I'll shelter anyone I choose, whether they like it or not. Yes? You still got him here? I have, and he'll stay as long as I care to keep him. It's for your own good, I'm telling you, Garth Anson. We know about that boy now. Folks don't want unnatural things here. What's unnatural about him? The fact that he knows how to laugh? Well, you know what's unnatural. Seeing stars in daytime. Or daring to say that you do. What's that? You hate him because he's different, don't you? Because what he is makes you uncomfortable. You hate his challenge. Don't you? My advice to you is to get him out of this house so we can get him out of this town. People are getting tired, you being this high-handed. Good night, Mrs. Prokeen. They're goading each other on. This can be very dangerous, Elspeth. We've got to do something right now. But what? We can't put him out. We can't even let him go, not with people feeling this way. Tonight, later, when it's dark, we've got to take him away. Where? Into the next town, wherever they haven't heard of him. We've got to have him keep this star thing secret. Are we leaving our home, Garth? Has it ever been that to you? It has to you. It isn't now. It's too much to do for him. No, I don't think so. Yes, I was very gratified to announce last Sabbath that the threat has been removed. There is no further cause to fear the child has been cast from among us. We will return to our accustomed virtues of order, reason, industry, sobriety. Let us give thanks. Is it really true, Reverend? You say they left with the boy? In the middle of the night, like thieves, they took him off. But wasn't that what the council wanted? Yes, Mrs. Stoner. The Ansons have sacrificed themselves to free us of an evil thing. Is that what they did, Reverend? We shall all sleep securely tonight, owing a debt to Garth Anson, and firm in our knowledge of righteousness. <laughs> It's awful dark tonight. Father? Uh, yes, boy? Why didn't you punish me for what I did to that boy? The boy is gone. We will speak of it no more. Look at the sky. There's not a star anywhere. Oh, the wind. The wind stings my eyes. Funny, the way it came up so sudden a week ago. Have you noticed the sky? Uh, notice how? It isn't a cloudy sky. The moon's bright enough. But where are the stars? There's not a single star. Silas? Yes, sir. Oh, stay close, boy. Mm. Stay here by me. It's dark. Where are you? Here. Take, take my hand. Why does it just keep blowing the whole week now? Well, never mind. It will pass. The other boys are scared. They say if the sky is clear, there ought to be stars. They say maybe that boy Enough, could... enough, Silas. 
Oh, hold my hand, Father. I'm used to the dark now. I'll take you where the others are gathered. Follow us, uh, Mrs. Brookine. Uh, oh, uh, take my other hand. Uh, yes, here, here. Oh, what are we going to do, Reverend? Why does the wind keep blowing? It hurts my eyes. I stood at the gate all day and asked the people from the other towns if their skies at home were dark. No, they said. The weather has been fine. The sky has been filled with stars. Why do you ask? How could I tell them why, I asked. Could I say we have no stars? Could I say there's nothing but this lonely wind? Oh, you're our pastor, Samuel. Tell us where the stars have gone. Where are they, Reverend? Yes. Where are the stars? I am not God, Mrs. Sona. How can I say where they are? You had no right to ask. It isn't the dark I mind so much. It's that stinging in my eyes. I'm old. We're all old tonight. Father? Yes, what is it, Silas? Look. Look at the moon. Uh, Yes. No, don't be frightened, boy. But it's growing smaller. It's fading. The moon is fading away. It's getting smaller and smaller. Father? Father? It's fading. It's going away. My, my, my friends, my friends, let, let us pray. We are gathered here, Almighty, to beseech the return of the stars. We are lost without the stars. The moon grows small and pale like a dull coin in the black sky. Return us to the light. What's everybody waiting for, Father? Why do they just stand here in the square? Uh, they're hoping. Oh, we've got to find them, Reverend. We've got to find Garth and his wife and that boy. We must get them back. We must bring the boy back to us. If we can, if we can. He'll come back if we find him. Call a meeting. Send out the town. Send everyone to find them. Look, if all of us search, yes. if we all look everywhere, oh, speak to them, Reverend. Uh, speak to them now. Send them out to find yes, him. Yes, yes. My, my yes. people, yes. I, I ask you to listen. The boy must be brought back among us. We must search for him in every town around us. Oh, Oh, how much farther. How far must we walk? Oh, it's it's just across this ridge. Oh, it's dark. Oh, the wind stings my eyes. I'll I'll just stay here. No, no. Help her up, Silas. We can't leave her here. I'm old. It's too far to climb. Come. You've been on the ridge road before. Uh, We'll soon be at the top. Come now. Come. Wait. Hold up the lantern, Silas. What's the matter? The road here. It's overgrown as though we wandered off. We haven't. It's... It's solid underfoot. What are these vines? What are these trees and weeds? The road is blocked. It ends here in the trees. No, how can it? I was on it a week ago. Father, look! Look down below. Where? (gasps) It's gone! (gasps) It's gone! moon. What? Look at the moon. It's getting so small. It's dripping faster. Faster. It's like a drop of dew out there. It's going. It's going. It's going. Where is it? Where is it? Where where is the moon? Where are the stars? There's Vega in the Lyra group. And there's Beta Centauri and Deneb. Out there is Regulus and Procyon. Theater 5 has presented The Noon Stars, written by Richard McCracken and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Paul McGrath, Alice Yerman, Cecil Roy, Tom McDermott, Lorraine McMartin, Evelyn Juster, and Bryna Rayburn. 
Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastatsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments right to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.